Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. And I'm Doug Carmen. And welcome to the show. Doug and I caught up with our guest demonstrating her craft at several Renaissance fairs and an art and wine festival. And I thought you would like to enjoy watching Annie McHale work and learn about the art of weaving. So, welcome to the show. Thank you, nice Darlene. To have you. Now, did you learn about weaving from other family members? I did not, but I did start at a young age. I was 17, and I went to a craft fair and saw somebody weaving on an ankle loom and became intrigued. So I went to the library, got a book. It had plans for building a loom. My dad helped me build the loom, and, wow. and off I went. <laughs> wow. And your loom was wood? It is. Did it look yeah. like this? It was very similar. Oh. Well, just um, kind of take us through the process of weaving, and we'll see what you do. <laughs> OK. Um, I have two groups of threads that go around the loom, and I'm just using my hand right here to manipulate them, pushing them up one time, down the next. The pattern's determined by how I arrange the colors on the loom, so you're seeing these. You're not seeing the weft as it goes in. It's always hidden between the two layers. So let's see. Maybe if we um, held it, move this back a little bit. And Move the move this one a little bit. <laughs> okay, we're having a hard time seeing what you're doing here. Um, the setup, um, putting the yarn on the loom itself, mm -hmm. is that complicated? I mean, it looks complicated. Is that hard? Where do you start? <laughs> you know? Well, it's not really very complicated. This is one of the simplest looms you can have, and I'll. Um, let me just grab this little one here to show you. When I set it up, I'm facing it this way, and I just wind my thread around the pegs. The more pegs I go around, the longer the finished piece is going to be. Oh. And they're divided here into two groups, so I can get that up and down motion. And I, the hardest part is just knowing where to put the colors to get the pattern I want in the finished product. So this obviously is going to give you a smaller width. Right. Ultimately, I, than this one. Right. Wide. I like this loom for weaving narrow things. What I have on here is some very fine silk. I'm weaving silk ribbon. It's very fine. A dental floss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what's on on this loom is some bamboo and rayon yarn. I'm oh. making a scarf here. Hmm. And with the scarves, I like to use yarns that have lumps and bumps and sparkle in them, and, and the colors are variegated, so it's um, not as intricate of a pattern as some of the other things I do with well, the scarves. Well, let's watch you some more. I, I, I get sidetracked. <laughs> There's so many beautiful things around here. It's like, but yeah, um, well, just yeah. getting started looked... Uh, you ha do you have to tie other pieces of yarn as you go when you run out? And then you um, have to... I, if I run out, if I run out of this weft yarn, I can certainly add another one in. Just tie it and continue. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So how long did it take you to learn getting the book and practicing? And Well, the process is really very simple. Getting good at it took a while. Uh, the trickiest part is keeping the borders even as you go. Any weaver will tell you that, um, mm. keeping the selvages straight. So it takes a while to, to get a feel for it and um, get good at it, and then understand the different ways to make patterns. Now here, I'm, I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to okay. loosen my tension bar a little bit and move the whole thing forward. The thing about an inkle loom is it's a continuous loop. The beginning ends are tied to the in finishing ends. So I'm just sliding the whole thing around. Hmm. The finished weaving goes underneath, and I get more open warp to work with, and I can tighten it up and keep going. Now, do you do any other crafts besides weaving? Do you? Um, I used to knit and crochet, and I found that to be very relaxing and almost meditative. Do you mm -hmm. find weaving that way, or do you, have you tried anything else? I have, um, I've experimented with a couple other types of weaving, and I've tried crocheting, but this is really what I love doing. Mm. It's and relaxing? It is relaxing. Ah. It's very good for pre-camera jitters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not here today, right? <laughs> so as you can see, it goes along pretty quickly. Um, this scarf here, 
I can start and finish this from, from setting up the loom to finishing the scarf in about an hour, maybe two. Oh, so Is you put all? on the TV oh, and so. you watch a movie or whatever it is that you watch and then you do your weaving too, right? <laughs> I, I can definitely watch TV and weave at the same time. Although I will tell you that um, I remember watching the movie Dances with Wolves, which is a very exciting movie. Yes. And, and as I wove, I got uptight. The, the more tense I got, the harder I pulled, you know, <laughs> as I wove. And the piece got narrower as it went. So <laughs> That's interesting. In the end, it wasn't a good guitar strap, but it would make a good necktie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, I can see that. You get excited and mm -hmm. get a little what, tighter. What, what material are you working with there? Um, this is rayon and bamboo. Bamboo. What are some of the unusual materials you might have worked with? Well, one of my favorite things. We have an example here over on the table. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hand me that this, one. This, this is definitely unusual. <laughs> yeah, um, familiar. Different. This is cassette tape. Oh. Now, I had seen in an art gallery somebody crocheted a dress out of oh, cassette yeah. tape, wow. and I went, oh, I could use that for yarn. I could weave with that. Well, the thing is, it's very delicate. It stretches and it breaks. Um, but in this one, it allowed that pink hot pink nylon to show through the fabric. So you you have not seen one before. You, this was no. your idea. No, once, once it's, it, it's, uh, you've woven it, it, uh, it's, it feels like it has some durability, strength to it. Well, it does, but I just didn't like it. It just feels very but plasticky. But I see, yeah, individually it seems So like what, I, yeah, it what I did on this one here is I combined cotton and cassette tape together Yes, and so it, yes. it feels more more like a fabric, and this is going to be more durable. This will be a guitar strap, and that cassette tape just is going to look great on somebody on stage with all that sparkle, right? It'll sparkle in the lights. Yes, and the blue, the contrast with the blue, though, but I can feel that it feels stable. Yeah. It definitely feels stable, so it added just what you needed to yes. keep it. Yes, it's a much nicer fabric than that. Oh, and then the, the other thing I'm um, using, this yeah. This, uh, this one is made from an old tie-dyed t-shirt, which I <laughs> cut. <laughs> you can start at the bottom with a pair of scissors and cut a t-shirt all the way around all in way a around. spiral, just about three quarters inch wide. Okay. And if you've ever cut into a t-shirt, you know it wants to curl when you do that. Yes, so, yes. so I just you know, oh, stretch okay. it like this and encourage it to curl up. So there's my ball of yarn that oh. I start with. <laughs> oh, that's clever. <laughs> and then, um, so I've got that as my warp threads going around the loom. And what I used for the weft thread to bind it all together is a commercially produced yarn that's made from recycled blue jeans. Wow. So this is. So people this could is... actually <laughs> save their t-shirts and then dye them. Yes. Or you dye well, them. Yeah, yeah, out. The, yeah. That was pre-dyed in a, a tie dye, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I... Or you could use white and then dye it. Yes. You could. Um... An old hippie shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real deal. Tie dye t shirt and blue the, um, jeans. I'm trying to think of those things we use. Uh, pot holders. You remember those things? Mm -hmm. They look like this. Oh, yeah. And you put them on there and then. Remember that? We had yeah, a the, hook or the yes. looper looms. We're going back a while yeah. trying to remember that one. But so that's, that's very unusual. Um, so, <laughs> do the patterns have meanings embedded into them or are they just mainly colorful designs? Well, the patterns are usually just my imagination going wild. I can be inspired by any number of things and there's a couple pieces here on the table. This um, one? This one you mentioned? Yeah. Mentioned, there uh, is a monarch. Uh, monarch butterfly grove at Natural Bridges State Beach, one of, of the course. parks that I work in. And after a trip to the, to the monarch grove to see the butterflies, I thought, oh, isn't that they're very beautiful, right? So I, I took the colors from the butterfly, and this has some glass beads woven into it. You work there? At, yeah. What, what are, you, are you a docent? or? Um, no, my day job is I'm a manager and buyer for five retail stores in s state parks in Santa Cruz County. Oh, nice. I and love I, that I weave place. by night. <laughs> so inspired. So, 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 Mm -hmm. This is your advocation. It's not your current. <laughs> it's your passion, right? Yes. 
Yes, well, I started when I was 17, which means I've been weaving for about 35 years. There were, there were some breaks in there when I was raising children, but sure. I, I've... Well, you could probably weave. I mean, I remember with my oil painting, I used to put the chair on top of the kitchen table and put the canvas you know, behind on the chair because they couldn't reach it. <laughs> well, one of the really nice things about Inkle Looms is that they're portable. So I have taken it to the playground while the kids are playing on yeah. the playground. I can sit and weave yeah. the laundromat. I spent a lot of time in the laundromat when the kids were little. And But I imagine people would, you know, really bother you. What are you doing? How do you do that? <laughs> I bet they, I mean. Well, you know, one of the things that I like about being able to take the looms around with me and weave in public is that Nowadays, you don't see a lot of weavers. People think it's a mysterious, ancient process. So it I like to, to <laughs> like to bring it into contemporary times and say it's perfectly practical today as much as it was. Well, you always have a crowd around you at the Renaissance fairs and stuff. Sometimes you're hard to get to because people are just <laughs> attracted. Um, but what I like is you are... memorizing is the watch. You just do it yeah, for a while, because you, yeah. you can see something unfold in front of your eyes. I, I like that you use them in things ways that I wouldn't even think about. Well, I don't normally carry one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Doug. I don't yeah. carry one of these. But uh, that's quite attractive. That's yeah, my husband's powder horn. Powder horn. I don't know if they use those, right? Well, not every. It's going to put it on you, but no. I'll be nice. Now, this also is your husband's. Um, right. That's and, his sash. It's six inches wide. I have another inkle loom that's a little bit wider than these, and uh, and it was inspired by this. It was Indian inspired. Design. I mean, aren't those beautiful moccasins? They are gorgeous. The, the colors in them are very They're subtle, perfect. But, but it's very striking. So. Oh my. Every once in a while, he, when I weave something really special, he gets to keep one. <laughs> um, this is beautiful. Now, yeah. this was obviously done on a bigger loom. Right. The, yeah. You because know, it width. looks just like this one, only it's a, li a little bit bigger. That, yeah, that brings up. Is there any major difference in the looms other than the, the, the size? I notice you have one. This one's kind of small. Yeah. That looks like very delicate. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do they all operate the same? the same? Yeah. They all operate just the same. Oh. It, it has okay. no moving parts except for a tension adjustment. So it's just a solid frame over here with dowels sticking out this side. This one has a paddle type tension adjustment. This one has a um, the peg that slides back and forth in the groove to adjust the tension. This one's great for packing in a carry-on suitcase. I like it because it, it's even more portable than the rest. You take it apart, of course. So, no. no. No, you wouldn't oh, take that no. one apart for sure. No, it has its own little suitcase. Really? <laughs> How cute. Yeah. yeah, and this one looks a little bit different. You might notice that it's got a solid frame on both sides. Yeah. But one of these sides is removable. So I can take it off to set up the loom. And then I put it back on and it makes it a little more stable and do you still have the one that your father built for you? Do you still, that's an I really regret. <laughs> yes, it is an antique. I really re regret. Um, the tension adjustment on that one wasn't very good. And so after using it for a while, I, I ended up buying one from the, at, at, a, at that craft fair from that woman who I saw weaving. She and her husband built looms. So I bought one of theirs because the tension adjustment was better. Hmm. And then a friend of mine showed an interest in weaving. And I said, oh, here, you can have my old oh, one. And I oh. so regret that. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I have eight of these. Have, I was going to ask it, you it's how a, many you have. <laughs> I run sort of a foster home. If somebody's getting rid of one, I'll take it in. And then if somebody needs one, I'll yeah, yeah. let it I, go I know again. how that goes. It's supplies, yes. I, I get that, too, with easels and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, which one is your favorite? The one behind you looks quite different, that, that big one. I don't know. It looks Yeah, that's pretty big. The only difference is that instead of sitting uh, sitting it on my lap, it, it's tall enough that it stands on the floor. It's got more pegs. I wonder if we could get this out of the way so the camera can see that a little bit better. Slip on it. No, that won't go in there. there. Well, you need this anyway. I won't <laughs> take it too far. Right. So this is the same thing. It's got a solid frame on one side, pegs sticking out the other. It's just tall. It's, it's tall. just taller. It's got more pegs. I can get more length. I think the maximum length I've woven on this one is 14 feet. Wow. 
Wow. And what I have on here now is a wool sash um, that'll be used by a historic reenactor. Can you demonstrate some of this one? I can. A, and this is wool. This is carpet wool. Um, I, you don't need your stool. I, guess. I don't need so a stool tall. for that. So this one just kind of tips over into my lap. Now this carpet wool I purchased from a carpet mill in Union City that was going out of business a number of years ago. It is actually what they make carpets out of. Big yeah. stock of carpet wool. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I loaded up. But wool isn't as easy to work with. Uh, you see that these, these threads are all very close to one another. And when I raise and lower them, they're brushing against each other as they pass through. And wool is very hairy, and it, it wants to stick together. So I have to coax it a little bit more to get that opening to pass Do you pass like working with through. wool more than, like, say, cotton or... I know, I know you pointed out one that was, this was cotton. Um, is there one material you like better than the other? Um, hmm. I like the feel, cotton feels good on, on the hands. Also this rayon and bamboo is, you know, it feels kind of silky on the hands, so it's nice to work with. Nice to work with, Well, yeah. probably least of all, it does, you know, scratchy. take some moisture out of my hands too. Yeah. <laughs> Now, while you're working, let's say you're watching TV and you're working and all of a sudden you notice a boo-boo about two, two inches back. Um, can That's you never happened. <laughs> <laughs> can you fix it or do you have to unravel it? Um, yeah, the the only it. way to fix it would be to go back to where the so mistake is. Unravel it. No. Yeah. That was Unweave. Like knitting and stuff, you know. <laughs> there, there are some times where I judge that it's not noticeable enough to to deal with. Um, with wool, it, it's harder to weave back because now all those hairs are in oh, place yeah. and, and undoing it um, yeah. becomes a little difficult. So if it's, if it's, I think it's really gonna be obvious and make mm. the piece, you know, ruin the piece, then I'll go back for it. But if not, I might not. Is there a time where you could actually put uh, something over it, like a patch of some sort? Or would that be like, oops, I'm no, mistaken. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. No, that would look clunky. No, yeah. I, I don't think so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this one. This one has, the pattern on this one is much more intricate. Uh, all the things I have on the loom here are a plain weave. Now this one and that uh, wide sash of my husband's have pickup patterns, which is to say that I pick up some of the threads and hold them out a turn so they lay across the surface. Oh, I see, yeah. And so then that they, they you float across a, pattern, a row or then. two. Right, so here. So you're talking about here? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So here I've got um, both that peachy color and the navy blue that are floating across the surface. They but take you know, turns. When you look at the back side, it's pretty too. <laughs> right, and the, <laughs> and also this one that I'm wearing, it, it looks completely. Here's. Either side, yeah. Either it's side beautiful. is good. Wow. And sometimes, if it's going to be a guitar strap, I have to decide which side I like better because I'm going to fold the ends and sew them over on themselves. A sash like this, I could wear it either. Yeah. Well, I know while you you're way. up, why don't you uh, show us some of your items over mm -hmm. there? Um, yeah. I noticed before. I noticed you uh, kind of specialize in uh, guitar straps. Is there any custom designs that have really challenged you? That would. Oh, I do get a lot of um, requests for custom guitar straps, but I, I offer that. And um, I've had people say, could you make, you know, these colors? And I think those colors don't go together. And then I do it and it works out. <laughs> um, I've had, this last year I've done some clothing trim. I've done um, some sashes for folks who are using them for Native American regalia. I've definitely done some guitar straps. I did some bench seat straps for somebody's uh, picnic benches. They had cushions made and they wanted a fancy strap to hold the cushion to the bench. So I get all these interesting ideas. I just did uh, finished a sash for a woman who had a, a coat. It, it's worn by Inuit women 
so they can carry their babies on their back. It's yes. got a little pouch that they tuck them in, but it requires a sash that goes around and helps support the baby in the back. I, I'd never heard of this, but I get these requests and I always say, oh yes, I can do that. I learned that from my father too. Yeah. Well, oh, yes, I see that, I can you, do that you've got some unusual mm -hmm. items. I mean, the shoelaces. Well, really the shoelaces really were a lot of fun to make. I used a... Everybody uses that. <laughs> nylon crochet thread for this and the colors were just so vivid that it was really fun to do. I did have a difficulty putting a nice tip on them. Yeah. The tips are kind of fat, so I'd like to work out a better way to do that. Maybe a little metal tube that can be crimped on there really nice and tight, but they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, hat bands. And one of the questions that I get asked a lot, because obviously most of the things I'm weaving are three inches or narrower. So people say, can you join them together to make something? Yeah. Well, the answer <laughs> is yes. So this purse is made by, um, it's all one piece. The strip goes down the front, around, up, turns, wow. and back. So this is all one strip, but they're butted up against each other. And that's a Celtic knot there too? That is a Celtic knot. It's mm. a design that I really like to make. I found it. It's beautiful. Somebody's website had the pattern for weaving that Celtic knot, and I printed the pattern off, but I had never sure. uh, worked from patterns before. So it was a challenge to understand the little squares on paper and what they meant. But, but once I got yeah. it, I really enjoy weaving it. Yeah, the, yeah. It sounds like you, you did develop a rhythm in your weaving as you go through it. Pretty soon it almost comes automatic, you don't. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I Sounds don't like. I don't have to think about it a lot. It's fun for me sometimes it's to just, just relax flowing, and huh? watch the pattern form at my fingertips. This one also is uh, that same Celtic knot pattern. Beautiful. And though though the, the pattern is the same, I always change the colors, the borders. I don't do any two things alike. So if you get a sash or a guitar strap, it's gonna be a one of a kind. Wow. Yeah, you you give a lot of uh, lectures, right? And, and I think recently you had you had something that you did in Sonora. I yeah. did. Yesterday I was over in Sonora. The Spinners and Weavers Guild there invited me to good. come okay. come and talk to them. So I had about three times this much stuff laid out, um, and we talked about, of course, the different patterning techniques. Um, so Can you bring you a couple more to us and then come back and sit so we can see them up yeah. a little closer? Just uh, yeah. well, well, you talk. Did you do you teach or do any uh, workshops? Um, I have taught, and I like to. I I always need to find the right place to do that. Oh well, you know, I I've taught like at rec centers, recreation centers. So that's right. probably in that, and even where you work, natural bridges. It could. That sounds like happen. a natural place. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you yeah. have. My goodness. Now, th this is a guitar strap, but that one has metal clips on the end, so it could oh. be used for a, a briefcase, a laptop, bag. Is this cotton? That one's cotton. cotton. Yeah, it feels mm -hmm. yeah, I feel the difference. Yeah, and it's a really it's good, strong strap, so it'll carry anything. I've I sold. Don't play, but if I did, <laughs> <laughs> I've sold some of those to uh, women who spin, they carry their spinning wheel in a canvas bag and oh. they attach the strap to it. Oh yes, yes. See, you all, really, I mean, if you put your mind to it, there's all kinds of ways that you can Well, use. I'm working on my list of 101 uses for a, a strap. And then the book is going to come out, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, on my blog, I've given away all my ideas. This is my own personal belt. You put this up where we can see it. Then. Yeah. It says, "Art is the language of the soul." Uh. Oh, you're doing. I got to turn it around so they can see it. No. Oh, oh, that's right side out. <laughs> if you look at the back, it's the negative. Yeah, the, the language negative. of the soul. Oh. So that was pretty. So you can write your book on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just weave the story. <laughs> yes, right. That's just a matter of uh, picking up and floating as you go along. Yeah, sure. in, in that one I have to pick and drop. drop. So whatever color I don't want, I got to get rid of it, and whatever color and I want. And your letterings can be from. any size that you want. So you, uh, you have a slightly bigger one here too. Right. Yeah. Well, the letters are about the same, but this one was kind of fun because the background is woven 
the border, the frame is woven, and the motto is woven all on my ankle looms. And this is used to hang. It's a wall hanging. Yes, yeah. I knew that. See, yeah. <laughs> you'd mentioned that uh, you you were offer strapped to uh, the uh, the women that carry their spinning wheels. Mm -hmm. And do you ever purchase uh, yarn from women that weave it? Or spin it? Spin it, yes. Yeah. I, I like well. working with hand spun. Wool usually yeah. is is the most common material that's hand spun. And I like it just because of the richness of the texture. I think um, jewelry would yeah. be a, um, a neat thing to do, some, mm -hmm. some jewelry pieces. This one is hand spun yarn. Mm. So a beautiful blend of um, wow. rich purples and oh, yes. burnt orange. Yes. Mm. So at the craft fair, you meet a lot of spinners that they, and, and, and I was wondering them, what do they do with their wool after they spun it? Yeah, go, yeah. I just finished a piece. Um, I do sell my things online. I have two shops on Etsy. And I just finished a piece, which I call my three generation Etsy piece, because the fiber was dyed, the wool fiber was dyed and carded, blended by one woman who sells on Etsy. It was purchased by another woman who spins and <laughs> spun it into a beautiful two-ply, two-strand yarn. And I purchased it from her and wove the sash, and now the sash is for sale on Etsy again. <laughs> oh. Well, this, this has been fascinating. I've just really, really enjoyed seeing. Uh, I didn't see all this when I was visiting you. Of course, you don't have a lot of time, but um, I had no idea you had so much assortment. And I liked what you said that no two are alike. Even right. if you're doing the same colors, it's not going to be exactly the same. So I want to thank you for coming here. I know it was quite a drive for you. I appreciate it and bringing all your material. And um, people can actually um, go to the website and check the blogs and all the other sites and see the material there. Um, very interesting. So thanks for watching the show and watch again. Yeah.